All right, Nick Whalen, Matt Meiselman, I am so happy you two are here because we talked sports betting earlier for tonight's Western Conference Finals game between the Mavs and the Warriors. And we have some DFS questions that I need you two to answer here. Uh, who makes the best captain play in tonight's showdown? I just opened it up and, well, north of $21,000 for Luca, which will be almost half your $50,000 salary, Matty. So despite this crazy salary or seemingly crazy salary, I still think Luka Doncic is going to be the highest owned captain by a mile because this game has some cheaper players. So I'm going away from it. Like it's a lot of money and Luka's obviously great, but I think everyone is going to build their lineup this way where you have all these 1K and 2K guys. My preferred choice is actually not even Steph Curry. I'm going down to Draymond Green, who just hasn't had a huge game yet in the playoffs. It seems like every game something weird happens with Draymond, whether it's foul trouble, he gets thrown out, um, Kavon Looney takes his minutes. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff going on with Draymond. But the upside is there, and I, I just don't think people are going to play him in the captain slot. So that's really what it comes down to. Like, I don't think there's a ton of ways to get unique with Luka as your captain. And really with Steph, you're not saving that much money. So I think going cheaper makes sense, and Draymond's my favorite in that mid-range. Okay, Waylon, what do you want to do here, dude? Because that's a lot of money to spend. Yeah, Matt's right about Luca. I I think I'd maybe disagree a little bit in that it'll be a popular play because you really have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. If you captain Luka Doncic, like, yes, there are there are technically a number of players who are listed at 2,000 or below, but, like, you know, how much do you trust that Dwight Powell, you know, he's even at 3,000. That doesn't even qualify. You know, we're talking Sterling Brown, Trey Burke, Moses Wright, uh, you know, maybe Jonathan Kaminga picks up some minutes if it's a blowout. Like, I, I just really don't like the options when you get below, you know, Dwight Powell at 3,000, Bertans at 3,900, uh, you know, even Kleba at, at 6,300. Um, I guess, oh, sorry, those are their captain salaries. I'm, yeah. I'm all turned around. Either way, I don't like a lot of the lower end options, especially for the Mavs who are coming off of a game in which their role players just completely no showed. I mean, Maxi Kleba looked like he didn't even want to be out there at times in the second half. Dallas needed wide open threes. He's passing them up. Um, you know, I think you have to look at someone like Draymond Green, like Matt said. You have to look at maybe Jordan Poole, who's been vastly outperformed by Andrew Wiggins in this series, fantasy-wise. But, you know, if you think back to round one and round two, some of the games that Jordan Poole had, you know, 50-plus point uh, DraftKings point upside. Um, you know, if you want to try to go for the win in this contest, I don't mind rolling the dice with Poole. Yeah, nearly 57 points per game is what Luka has been averaging in the Western Conference Finals against uh, Golden State here. Uh, where's the value in this contest then, Matty? You seem to think there is some? Well, I'm not sure if I want to play the value, but I think that most people are going to gravitate towards Moses Moody. Otto Porter Jr. is the guy that's out for this game, so I think it opens up some Warriors minutes. But I'm going to go back to Maxi Kleba at $4,200. He looked as bad as possible last game, and I just think no one's going to play him. So he's not really... I don't know if he's quite the value play in terms of points per dollar projection of some of the guys that are a little cheaper, but I think the guys down around $1,000 like Juan Biscano Anderson and Moses Moody and Davis Bertans who took some of Cleva's minutes, I think that more people will play those guys to be able to fit Luca and Steph and some other high-priced players. So to me, Kleba probably is the most contrarian of this range and there's nothing encouraging about the way he played last game. Really, it's just he, he had a good season, and he's had stretches where he's looked good for most of the year. He's a very streaky player, and maybe he had a good practice or something, but it's really just buying low on a guy who I don't think people are going to want to play for this game. Okay, how about some value, Nick? Yeah, you know, I've kind of been having the same conversation with myself about Kleba where it almost seems too obvious. Like, he can't be that bad again, can he? But then there's also the concern of, you know, did Dallas go back and watch that tape and see, like, this guy wanted no part of wide open threes. You know, he's broken right now. We can't play him. Um, you know, it's not like he's going to be a DNP, but I wouldn't be surprised if if he comes out and goes 0 for 2 right away or looks tentative. You know, maybe we see Jason Kidd say, look, we just we can't live with this right now. We need to win this game. So I think there is some, some pretty massive risk right now uh, with Maxi Kleba. But I agree with a lot of what Matt said. You're almost playing the odds. Like, he just can't possibly be that bad again. I think you can make a similar case for Reggie Bullock who's a little more expensive at 5,800. He, of course, was 0 for 10 from the field in game three, 0 of 7 from three-point range. But at least he looked confident. You know, I mean, he's a similar player to Kleba in that he's just extremely three-point dependent. If he's not going 5 of 8 from three, it's going to be almost certainly a complete dud fantasy-wise. But 
he at least looked like he wants to be out there. He could defend uh, a little better than Maxi Kleba. I think his minutes are, are more uh, something you could bank on. Uh, so Reggie Bullock is that guy for me. Okay, there may be some people who are deciding to, like, fade him tonight, Nick. Is there a guy you are deciding to fade in this showdown? <sighs> Man, I, it's it's really tough. There's, there's not one guy I'm for sure staying away from. I mean, Kleba is, is definitely on the watch list for me. He's on the, the potentially fade list. I, I think it's probably Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, it just it kind of it's kind of the opposite op, uh, argument of what we just said about Kleba, where it's like, all right, Spencer Dinwiddie had a, another fantastic game off the bench. He typically doesn't do this twice in a row. You know, he's he's kind of been a disappearing act at times in these playoffs, and all of a sudden he'll go for twenty five or thirty off the bench, and then he's down to six points the next game. Um, so while I think there's room for improvement for a lot of those role players on the Dallas bench, I, I don't quite see Spencer Dinwiddie having the game that he did in Game Three. So I think maybe some people think back to that. Maybe they look at the game log. And they just blindly plugged in with Ian. Okay, Maddie. maybe there's not someone you're just absolutely staying away from, but should people be cautious with any of these guys, plugging them and playing them? Well, I think people that look at ownership projections should be really cautious about Kavan Looney because this slate is a little tricky where there's a bunch of guys that are priced very similarly between the mid sixes and the mid eights in salary. And I think Looney is going to get touted because his recent performance has been unbelievable and his ownership projections just based on like the way his fantasy stats look for the course of the season, it's not going to come in that high. I think most people are just kind of going to expect that he's moderately owned because he's in the same tier as players who generally are much better fantasy players than him, like Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie and Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Dorian Finney-Smith. And I think when the game actually starts and we see all the ownership come through, Looney is going to be much higher than people expect just because of recency bias. He's looked unbelievably good, and Otto Porter Jr. is out, so his minutes are more secure. But the Warriors are definitely comfortable playing Draymond Green at center, and there's definitely significant downside for Looney for that reason if, let's say, the Mavericks get out to an early lead and the Warriors are in catch-up mode where, Dray where they go small and Draymond plays center. So I think there are a lot of ways Looney fails, and I could see him being among the most popular players on the slate. Yeah, he's um, – I mean, it helps him that Dallas owns one of the worst front courts in basketball for sure. Uh, let's get you guys out of here with this, plain and simple. Let's get your pick to win tonight. Uh, Nick, the Warriors close this thing out? I think they do, Emerson. I think they do. You know, they, they had a chance to close out Memphis – in round two after going up 3-1 and we're all of a sudden down 55 points in that game, ended up losing by 39. I think that's kind of a warning, right? You know, like there's no way that they could let that happen again. It was clearly just a, a complete letdown game. Uh, so I, I think Golden State's been put on notice. And and honestly, you know, there's a big difference between being up 2-0 in the series, uh, which obviously Dallas came back from uh, against Phoenix, and being down 3-0. You know, that 3-0 is a death knell. It's, it's never happened in the NBA. The team hasn't come back, especially – against a team like the Warriors that has this kind of pedigree. I don't think Dallas is just going to come out and roll over. I think we still get a good game. You know, there's a reason it's only a one-point spread tonight. But I think Golden State can smell it. I think they've been the better team now for three straight games. And, you know, deep down, I think the Mavs know this series is over. All right. Is it over, Mr. Meiselman? I don't think it's over yet. I mean, I think they'll lose in five most likely. And I do worry about the psyche of the Mavericks, and maybe they just don't care that much about this game. They kind of know it's over. But – if they play well in the first quarter, I think we can see them actually, you know, the crowd get into it and be a little more motivated. But ultimately what this comes down to for me is that the Warriors roster is pretty depleted, assuming Otto Porter Jr. doesn't play. No Gary Payton, no Andre Iguodala. I think the Mavericks have the better team still, as weird as that is to say, for a team down 3-0. Um, I'm not picking them to win the series. I think they probably lose in five. But I feel pretty good about their chances for game four just because the Warriors are missing some depth for this game.